Hello everyone, I'm Jay and this is The Camden Stitch. Hi, welcome back to Sewing on a Budget. It's so lovely to see you again. I'm sorry I've been away for the last couple of weeks. Um, I shall put another video out that's got a bit more chat about just general stuff that's going on, but for today let's just do a roundup of the wonderful Sewing on a Budget series. I have enjoyed it so much and judging by your comments you've enjoyed it and found it useful as well. I hope that you've managed to save some dollars or some pennies anyway. Um, the entries for Sew Frugal are coming in thick and fast. If you're on Instagram search for the hashtag SewFrugal19 and you can follow that hashtag and then you'll see all the entries. We've had some absolutely fabulous entries. I'm loving seeing them all come in. Um, I have been trying to share them on my stories but because I've been a little bit absent from social media I haven't been able to share all of them. So if I missed yours then I'm really sorry about that. Um, I am trying to share as many of them as I can. Um, I just thought today we would do a little bit of a roundup of all the suggestions that you've made about um, sewing on a budget. So there have been loads of suggestions and I'm going to have to keep on referring to my notes. I've got my laptop on my knee down here. But I want to give a mention to everybody who suggested um, things because they're so wonderful. So um, let's start off with your suggestions about where to get free patterns. Um, protesting Maryland Seamstress suggests um, Blueprint that used to be Craftsy that has free patterns. Um, Deborah Ralston mentions that getting free patterns is even harder if you are in the um, larger end of the size range and I think that's really worth pointing out and she mentions the Curvy Sewing Collective and that they've got a resource on their website that tells you where to get free patterns that go up to larger sizes and the, the Curvy Sewing Collective is such a brilliant website I use it all the time I use it for all their um, tutorials about full bust adjustments and stuff um, it's just a brilliant website so I do recommend that um, my favouritest ever YouTube username has to be um, Mary De Nax Murderer <laughs> um, I'll put her up on the screen so you can see that I love it. I absolutely love it. Hello, Mary. <laughs> uh, Mary Denax Murderer um, reminds us about the free patterns on peppermint, and I can't believe that I forgot to mention peppermint. I should pop all this in the description box down below, by the way, so don't you don't have to write anything down while I'm chattering away. Um, peppermint Magazine are an Australian magazine that has a focus on sustainability, and they have a free sewing pattern every month, and they're designed by In The Fold, and that's who did the wide leg pants that I made. Have a look in that video up above. Um, so they have got some brilliant patterns, all free, all downloadable uh, on their website. Um, Raz Lalik mentions that YouTube has millions of tutorials for making clothes for free. She says, search for thrift transformations to find lots of fashion forward ideas. Zoe Gardner mentions that you can buy back issues of sewing magazines for a couple of quid or at least half the price that they were when they initially came out and they will have the original cover mounted pattern with them um, usually but do check so if you go on the website for those magazines they'll usually show you where you can get back, back issues from and you can get those for a lot cheaper than you would buy when they originally came out so that's really a good idea. Jan Filippo, hi Jan, mentions um, garage sales, garage sales. Um, we don't really have them in, in the UK, but obviously if you're in America, uh, garage sales, um, estate sales, house clearances um, are great places to get free or really cheap patterns from. Ms Worthy mentions Prima and Prima magazine have long had a sewing pattern and these days they don't give away the sewing pattern with the magazine. You have to register with them and they will post it out to you. Uh, but that's a great way of getting a magazine with a, a sewing pattern if you uh, like those styles. But sometimes they are a little bit, sometimes Prima magazine uh, styles are a little bit dated but they do have some great ones. Uh, and you can see that I made up a Prima pattern in the jumpsuit that I made recently. It was very 90s. Middle East Millie, who always comments on my vlogs, so hello Millie, uh, mentions that you can uh, rub off patterns, which always makes me laugh because 
it's a little bit blue. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Middle East Millie mentions that you can always um, make copies of patterns from your existing ready-to-wear garments. Once they're worn out, you can uh, take them apart and um, trace around them. Eight Legs mentions, this is so good and I forgot to mention it, that all the sewing magazines do really, really cheap introductory subscription offers. Uh, she mentions Love Sewing, that they did five pounds for five or six issues. Um, and you can cancel it when it renews, so you don't have to keep on paying at the higher rate. You're not usually tied in, but just do check the terms and conditions. But most of them do a really, really cheap offer, and you don't have to hang on. Uh, after the offer's run out, you can cancel it, and that is a brilliant way of getting a magazine and a pattern for really, really cheap, you know, a fraction of the price. Lynn, hello Lynn Prentice, mentions the Ellie and Mac pattern company they do wacky wednesday so every week if you go to their website they do certain patterns for i think about a dollar um and they're really nice patterns i've seen loads of people make them up on instagram so that's ellie and mac again that'll be all be in the description box below thanks for mentioning that lynn a couple of people mentioned um getting resources at the library and I can't believe I didn't mention this because I actually started my career working as a library assistant and I worked in libraries for the first three years of my career. I absolutely loved it. Uh, but um, Kathleen, who's hide and silk, and uh, Anna at You Got Me and Stitches both mentioned going to the library to get books on pattern cutting or books that have patterns in them. Uh, Kathleen mentions that her library will actually buy books that she mentions, uh, which is amazing. I mean, there's so few libraries left these days. Uh, but if you've got a library near you, that's a brilliant resource. And also by using the library, you're helping to keep it open and supporting such a brilliant local community resource. So don't forget libraries. Right, so that's patterns covered. Uh, going on to tools, uh, I obviously mentioned a lot of uh, really cheap tools uh, from Wish um, and various other cheap sites, eBay, etc. in my vlog on sewing tools. Uh, Rosie Claire does mention um, that occasionally cheap sewing tools can not be great so you can get blunt pins. Um, I've never had an experience like that but it can happen. Obviously if you're buying stuff that is not a named brand and is like maybe an eighth of the price of a named brand, occasionally you are going to get something that's dud. I've had a couple of dud things that haven't worked for what I've wanted them to and I think that is a bit of an occupational hazard of buying things cheap but you do just need to bear it in mind so thanks for mentioning that Rosie Claire. Um, she also says some of the cheap going some of the cheap sewing curves have measurements that aren't always accurate and are very flimsy. Um, so yeah, check your measurements against raw rulers. Again, I've never had that pro problem. I have had um, tape measures that are really old, can stretch, and obviously when they stretch, they're not accurate anymore. Um, so, but you do just need to be aware of that. Going on to your tips about getting cheap fabric, Rach from Stitched Up um, mentioned that you can always refashion clothes that you get in charity shops. Um, now, I am the world's worst refashioner. I have to say, it's my total blind spot. I am not good at seeing something that's already been made into something and imagining how it could be changed into something else. I always think when they do that, um, that part of the sewing bee, um, I always think I would be so rubbish at it. But if you're good at refashioning, I've got the most respect for you. Um, she says, look for the largest possible sizes of dresses and men's shirts, which can be a good way of buying nice fabrics that you can then remake into something else. Great idea. Barbara GS and Sam Chandler both mention that it's worthwhile looking in a shop to see if they have a remnant bin. And um, yeah, I've completely forgot about getting remnants. Brilliant way of getting cheap fabric. Uh, don't forget curtain remnants as well. Um, upholstery fabrics are great for like bottom weight things because they're that little bit heavier. Um, Laura, as Becky Seamstress, mentions that if you go to events then they often give you for dis discount codes for, for nearby shops and she says often at big trade fairs you can get 10% off the fabrics from some of the normally only online shops and also that some pattern tests offer free or reduced fabrics. I don't know about pattern testers who offer free fabrics. I've mentioned this before. I know that some do, but I don't know who they are. I've not come across them myself. So if you're aware of them, then leave a message below because it might help other people to find them. Um, 
Laura also mentions mystery bundles. They are a great way of getting um, cheap fabric. All fabric retailers will have offcuts, end of rolls, etc., that they will need to get rid of. Um, I have tested some before, or reviewed some rather, for the Minerva Crafts blog. Um, I got a pack for, I think it was five pounds. Um, I was given it, but it would have retailed at five pounds and I got, I think, about five metres of fabric. But anyway, it was a mystery bundle. It was great fun finding out what was in there. And they were pieces of fabric that were, I think the smallest was 60 centimetres and the largest was a metre. So they were around that size. Um, I think they're a really good way of getting um, cheap fabric to play around with for twirls, but you do have to be in the smaller size range because I think that um, I could just about get a cami from 60 centimetres of fabric, but it was a, you know, it was a bit, a bit tricky. And so I think that if you're in the larger size ranges and you, your pattern pieces won't fit on that fabric, then, you, you know, it's not going to be as good value because you're not going to be able to use the smaller pieces of fabric. So do, do just bear that in mind. Um, Hales Moore, hi Hales, mentions that she's entered sewing contests on Instagram and have won fabric vouchers, yet there's so many uh, sewing contests. I'm running one at the moment in my shop, um, which uh, you will see a vlog about coming very soon, um, a competition to win a fabric bundle. And Lynn Prentice, hi again Lynn, mentions uh, all the D-stash groups on Facebook that sell um, cheap fabric. Uh, she mentions So Affordable Fabrics, Queen Bobbin D Stash, and I've got to give a plug for the Fabric Edit, my own new shop that has just opened a Facebook group, so look us up. Um, cheap Machines, Jan Filippo. Jan Filippo mentions that if you're in the US and you're looking for inexpensive machines, look on shopgoodwill.com. Um, they sell vintage to more current mo models. They have no guarantees, but if you can buy a $300 machine for $9.99, you can afford to get it working, in my opinion. I think she's dead right. If I can get one for $10, I would be over the moon. I've just bought a vintage machine online for £35, including postage. I have no idea what it's going to be like. That might have been 35 quid down the drain, or it might be the best 35 quid I ever spent. Let's wait and see. Um... And finally, uh, let's just talk about general budgeting tips. I had some really good advice from um, Alex, who vlogs at Gingerhead & Co. Check out her channel. Um, Kelly King and Alex Judge all recommended a book to me, which I then did download and listen to as an audiobook. It is called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it's a self-help book and it's about building better habits basically and um, making very small changes to your behaviour to have a big impact on your life and I did enjoy it. I didn't find it groundbreaking for me but the fact that three people recommended it to me shows that lots of people are finding it really helpful so um, check it out especially if you're on Audible or something like that and you've got a credit that you can use um, it's definitely worth a listen. Maureen Cullen mentioned a trick that I can't believe I forgot to mention to you now I call it will you still love me tomorrow and what this what I mean by this is when you're shopping online for fabrics this is what I used to do with clothes and shoes actually have a good shop shove everything in your basket don't buy it return leave the tab open and return to it a couple of days later and if you still love it then consider buying it um i don't ever really go back and buy everything that's in my basket i always go back and have a prune um but i think that's a great tip for deciding whether or not you really do love something gaga knits mentions a great budgeting tip she says, work out your budget, decide what you can afford to spend and then uh, draw that money out as cash. And she says, once you've spent the cash, that's it for that month or that week, whatever you're doing your budget, whatever timeline you're doing your budget for. Um, if you don't buy anything that month, draw the same amount the following month and you've got twice as much to spend. I don't think I've ever underspent. I think I would spend up to my limit. But I did used to do this actually. Um, I When I was on a tight budget, I used to draw it all out in cash. I used to break it down into sort of five pounds, ten pounds and like pound coins. And then I used to put money on one side for magazines, for lunches, for going out and clothes allowance and it's a great way to keep yourself to a strict budget 
you do have to be quite self-disciplined. Um, nowadays I don't do it in cash anymore but there's a banking app that I use called Monzo and I've got account through them and they have, they're called Pots and you can put your money in different pots for things and they have something called a coin jar which is every time you make a purchase they will round up that purchase to the next pound. They put all the spare change in a coin jar and so you've got a little pot that's mounting up um, to save you money. I think I've got about 15 quid in my coin jar at the moment. Um, it just really helps with budgeting and knowing where all your money's going. So that's called Monzo and again I will link it below. Kathleen hiding silk Silk has a great suggestion. She says, what has helped me keep under control and objective about my fabric, fabric buying is my stash book. She says, I put small swatches of all my fabric in a little A5 hardback notebook. I include all the details of the fabric, date, price, seller, yardage, composition, washing, washing instructions, whether it's been washed and used and what for. I dip into this book constantly as it's such an easy way of remembering what I have and reminding myself that I don't need more. I often sit with a coffee, a pile of old birders and my book, planning and dreaming, scribbling pencil notes of ideas next to fabrics. That sounds like such a gorgeous way of spending an hour or two or an afternoon and costs no money and very much draws on the idea of using what you already have and preventing you from buying more and I really think that's such a brilliant idea so thanks Kathleen for that one. That is a the end really of all your brilliant ideas. I hope you have been reading the comments, thank you so much to everybody who's contributed to that and um, I'm really sorry if I didn't get to mention people, I'm really sorry if I didn't manage to give you a mention uh, but I, I didn't want this video to take forever. I did just want to end this roundup by talking about a, a couple of makes that I've made so far uh, for the So Frugal challenge. Now I do feel like I'm cheating slightly with this challenge because every single thing I make is frugal. Um, I have got one piece of expensive fabric sitting in my stash waiting to be used but um, yeah only one in all the fabric that I've got. Most of the fabric I buy is pretty cheap. Um, in fact, just this morning I've been and I've managed to get the market seller to sell me. Um, I asked for a certain piece of fabric and they found a flaw on the fabric while they were cutting it for me. So they cut off the piece with the flaw in and I said, well, will you just sell me that piece instead at a discount? So I managed to get um, two and a half metres of fabric for three pounds. Um, anyway, I shall probably make that into another So Frugal make. But... Um, I just wanted to show you these two dresses that I have made so far using um, the, birder mat, the birder pattern that I mentioned when I did the uh, review of August Birder magazine. It was the dress that I loved that had the gathered waist and I've actually made it twice in um, some fabric that I got from Walthamstow Market. Um, I made it in this one, I'll post a, a picture up for you to look at. Um, I think this if I worked out the cost of this fabric plus the pattern, I think this dress cost me about four pounds. And um, this fabric was slightly more expensive, so this one probably cost about a fiver. Um, I think I actually prefer this crepe one, this electric blue one. I just love the color of it. Um, it was such an easy make and it's such a lovely easy dress to wear um, it's great sort of for transitioning through the seasons because it's quite lightweight but it's got full length sleeves it's got the elastic on the waist so it's super comfy um, so yeah two really cheap makes um, and using the birder pattern and I'm going to be cutting out another pattern from that magazine so I'll be getting more value from my birder um, very very shortly um, anyway, that pretty much rounds up the Sewing on a Budget series. I've enjoyed it so much. Um, I hate to put my begging cap out, but if you've enjoyed this series, I wonder if you would consider buying me a cup of coffee to say thanks. You can do that by clicking on my Ko-Fi account. I don't know if it's pronounced Ko-Fi or coffee. Um, but I shall pop a link to that in the description box below. And it basically gives you an option to buy me a coffee, which basically involves... is 
donating three quid and uh, a few people have done that already and honestly it means so much to me because I do spend quite a bit on the vlogs uh, by buying bits and pieces um, because I'm planning on doing a pattern drafting vlog for you I actually went and spent about 30 quid on Amazon on pattern drafting books so not so frugal um, but if you'd consider buying me a coffee it would really really um, make me so happy and I would mega appreciate it. That's it from me today. I have got a couple of other vlogs coming up uh, because I feel like I'm a bit out of touch with you because I've not been around for the last couple of weeks. So um, stay tuned and they will be up very, very soon. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Click on the subscribe button if you haven't already and click on the ding ding bell and you'll get notifications every time I post something. And it's been lovely spending time with you today. I'm gonna send you a big sloppy kiss from London. See you soon. Bye. Uh, I try to round up ideas when more than person mention when one